Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for Tuesday, August 6, 2019. Uh, this one will be brief. Last night I spent a lot of time focusing on long-term charts, going down, drilling down through the top components of the uh, QQQ and S&P 500. Uh, so this one will just keep it brief. And... Um, uh, talk about what happened today and where we may go from here. Uh, so we did get that bounce, as I said in yesterday's video, told you that the um, the index is all reversed off and held uh, or closed on or above the uh, two, their 200-day uh, exponential moving averages. So there it is on SPY. That's the red line parked right above it. And um, <clears throat> we got a decent bounce. I said we might bounce, you know, the, the logical targets that I said yesterday, the most obvious were uh, the uh, the the top and bottom of yesterday's or uh, I should say, yeah, yesterday's gaps. And that's it right there. So that's, that's a, almost exactly where we hit on SPY. You can see that. And, and again, so good for a quick bounce trade. But as I maintain, this is this is usually not how a correction ends. Uh, that is usually, uh, to me, the, the bigger question is, is this kickback rally part of maybe a larger corrective wave, you know, like say an ABC correction with more upside, or is this just a little blip on the way down, um, you know, uh, with with the selling to resume tomorrow in another much larger wave pattern to evolve? Hard to tell right now. Again, like I said uh, yesterday, we were uh, very oversold in the near term. In fact, the, you know, the RSI on the daily chart had dropped from oversold down to I mean, overbought down to oversold in, in pretty short order. So we were also oversold on the daily time frames as well. And like I said, extremely oversold on the shorter term time frames. That coupled with all those stocks being at support, the indexes and, and the market leading stocks, you know, and the fact that it held, it could have went the other way, but uh, that, that was a catalyst for the bounce. So there it is. So the minimum, uh, you know, keep it very simple. And I'll get, update this in a second. I'll show you the update I posted on the front page of right side of the chart today. Uh, if I can get that exactly. You know, that's that's my, my preferred bounce target zone. And I, I can't tell you if it ends here or ends atop. It could certainly do more. When I say preferred, that's the sweet spot. Uh, we could bounce all the way up there. You know, it's possible my uppermost bounce target, you know, be 294. I'd be golden if we got back up there, but I doubt we will. And, uh, you know, and if it's much more than that, then, hey, then this was just a shot, of, you know, a, a one-off type of correction. Uh, I really don't want to see us go much above there. So let's just say that this is where, you know, my minimum bounce target has been hit. That's that's me saying it very clearly. That was the minimum bounce target yesterday. Uppermost preferred be a backfill the gap somewhere in there. I'm sure a lot of eyes will be on the top of that gap if we get in there. And I'll, I'll hone down and give you some additional targets on the 60-minute charts here in a second. Let's just go to QQQ. Same story. We zoom in a little bit. Uh, we can take away all these trend lines. You can see QQQ reversed right off that 200-day moving average, which as I went over in yesterday's video. Now when you start slicing through it during correction period, but during a trend, when you haven't visited it in a long time, that's when you usually come back to it. So, uh, and then you can see also uh, almost a perfect backfill. We barely entered the gap, but I said this earlier today that in the uh, on right side of the chart dot com that. Keep in mind when Q pops into gets into the gap, SPY was lagging behind at the same point in time. So I'm going to get to the inter interday charts in a second. So that's it. So both QQQ and SPY, to keep it very simple, the two major large cap indexes I follow have now hit my minimum bounce targets. And I would put almost coin toss odds as uh, whether the bounce is over and we resume the selling uh, tomorrow uh, or there's a little more upside almost coin toss odds. I can tell you what I did, you know, so you know, traded it long, got out at the end. Um, actually, I still have, I don't know if they've been hit. I posted in the trading room shortly ago uh, that I was tightening stops up because we're heading into the close. We're at those gaps. And so we'll see what happens there. Trading account, I've, you know, I keep my, yeah, of course, short positions, but I've also, you know, took a lot of profits, especially after that swoon down after hours. Um, got out of some things like, you know, in, in the IRAs and stuff, and SQQ, TVIX, TNA, that kind of uh, TZA. And I'm started layering back in, and that's my plan. I'll just continue. Whether we reverse from here uh, tomorrow, whether the market resumes the downtrend or whether we kick on up, my plan is to continue to scale back in up to but not above those uppermost bounce targets. So uh, again, uh, if we don't go any higher, I'll continue to add back, you know, some shorts that I started putting back on today. And um, either way, because uh, I don't, like I said, coin toss odds whether the uh, bounce is over or not. So now let's look at some levels.
Okay, these were the 60-minute charts posted on rightsideofthechart.com this morning. Uh, you don't have to enter the whole URL. You can come in. This is uh, general market analysis. Uh, you can uh, public content. RSOTC.com will get you to the site as well, short URL. Uh, so this one has potential bounce targets for QQQ or 182. So it's, it's a range, a bounce target range. And it runs from 182 up to 188.37 or so. So that's that's... That was and is the bounce target range. And as I just showed you, uh, we'll get to the updated charts. This one was taken, this is as of yesterday's close. I took this screenshot in pre-market. It doesn't have the trade. So that is coming up here at least to that 183.52 level. Um, and that's the bottom of the gap, which I just showed you we, we entered, we hit today. And uh, there's the top of the gap right there. And uh, so what happens if they're going to backfill the gap and they get close to it, one of two things. You'll reverse if everyone's shorting the backfill of the gap, if we happen to even get there. Or the markets, you know, as they like to be cruel, will just keep going through there and, and roast all the shorts that short at that level. So, uh, like I said, I'll continue to scale in up to but not at, not above that point because that's my uppermost bounce target. And should we just go back down here? I've already started to scale in because this bounce target zone is the same as my scale back into shorts, scale back out along the you know for the bounce account the active trading account uh, so that was QQQ uh, this morning let's show you where it was what happened on the 60 minute chart this is it there was that uh, this is that same bounce target range uh, that was laid out right there and uh, well let me box it in with that same color tool here uh, there it is right there so 183.52 uh, roughly the uh, the bottom of the big gap uh, yesterday's big gap and uh, you know bounce all the way up there the top of the gaps right here at about 186 or so give or take and um, so that's again this is where I you know see things playing out from here either today's bounce is over and again coin toss odds almost meaning close to probably 50 50 and uh, you know if we happen to continue up we could reverse anywhere in that zone and if we go much above there then you know um, my read on the market is wrong at least at this point in time if we start to get up there i'll you know i'll look at the charts i can't you know it's like forecasting weather i can be more accurate in the short term you know weathermen can get pretty tell you with pretty good degree of confidence uh certainty if it's going to rain today maybe even tomorrow a few days out you know as farther you go out in time that's technical analysis it's hard to predict but you know, as we get there, depending on what we see on the charts, volume, you know, price action, divergences, where all those market leading stocks are, we might have a better idea. Um, and if we just turn around and start, you know, continue more of the same uh, going forward, well, then we go back out to those longer term charts uh, or targets that I uh, laid out in some of the uh, recent videos. And uh, I'll continue to post updates on the site. So that's it, uh, QQQ. And then SPY on that earlier post today, that was QQQ. Here was my chart on SPY. Potential bounce targets for SPY are just shy of uh, 282.22. Um, this was a zone, a tight range, 290.14 to 283. You can see it right there. And then um, uh, 294 with my it being my max bounce target right there. So that's the bounce target zone. It was getting laid out uh, today. And it's the same thing. It's a, uh, the, the bottom of the gap right there is at 282, 22-ish level on SPY. And uh, that's what was hit today. Let's look at that updated chart. Again, this was posted in pre-market, so that just shows where we closed yesterday. Uh, SPY, 60-minute. And box it in for you like we did over there. That's the bounce target range. And you can see uh, there was a SPY today. It came right up to that level. Uh, we hit a high of uh, 288.04, close enough for government work. You know, when you're talking a few pennies on a 300, almost $300 security, that is effectively a tag. And I always say, you know, if you're targeting this level or this one, you want to, if you're planning to short a run at that level, you want to wait, you want to short a little shy of it in case the sellers step in early. If you are planning to go long on a breakout above the, the gap, um, then you want to wait until after that level is taken out. Uh, the exact gap is, not that it matters to the penny, again, these are, you know, big levels. Uh, the high there, uh, 288.21 right there. So, yeah, I could really lower that down a penny, but we'll just leave it there. Uh, so that's it.
same story I put up some Fibonacci retracement levels you can see those on there the purple lines and if you're not familiar with what those are here's the fib line right here so it's from the move from the highs down to the lows these are things you know I factor that in and what I like to see if the Fibonacci retracements the levels are over here to the left hard to make out there's a 38.250618 uh, retracement uh, I give them a higher weighting when they, if and when they come in with my uh, price resistance levels, like that 61.8 fib does there. Uh, the 50 is not really so much, and the 38 is right in the middle of the gap there. Let's see what they look like on QQQ because I didn't mention those, but I had those on there. Actually, QQQ is a little cleaner. So it's, again, same story. These are that's a Fibonacci retracement line uh, from the uh, the recent highs down to yesterday's lows, and you can see that uh, th I put up the 23.6. I didn't have it on the spy. That's the lowest Fibonacci number uh, on the retracements on on this program here, and you can see that came in right around that my 183.52 minimum bounce target there. And so we pretty much hit that minimum fib retracement. Now what this what that'll tell me right now, well it's certainly level and it aligned with price resistance. So that was on another reason that QQQ should have you know stopped there or had a reaction, which it did. I mean this is technical analysis. Um there's the react look at the gap. You know, there was the gap was, you know, started here on the gap down yesterday. We ran up, hit it once hit it twice and even on the intraday you see more candles this is a 60 minute chart so we spent all day that was where you know, the market stalled couldn't get through and like I say resistance is resistance until unless taken out so going forward uh, again coin toss odds but I'm leaning this way um, that uh, we, we continue down and um, you know I'll probably um, actually take that back I had tightened up stops and stop and reverse and yeah I'm back uh, I'm back short again uh, in the futures but we'll see that that could change on a dime but uh, if we continue to go up now talking swing trading here forget about active trading stuff uh, like I said if we continue to go up to my you know anywhere up to that 188.37 but not above it I will continue to add to scale into short swing positions or if tomorrow we just resume the downtrend I'll also uh, add back into the uh, you know the positions I lightened up on yesterday here's a quick look at IWM for you small cap traders you know there's a big old gap right there and we we actually didn't even make it all the way up to the gap in IWM small caps lagging behind again I liked QQQ today was you know my preferred trade yeah, you trade it most often but I'll, I also have I, I should to clarify I had some RTY along for the day too and um, the reason I liked uh, QQQ yesterday is I showed you almost all, actually all of the FANG stocks, uh, FAAMG, were at support, had fallen to and held support. A lot of those tested again today, like, you know, for example, Amazon, you know, that's one of them, very beloved stock. Uh, there it is. You know, I had that 1752 level, hit it yesterday, boom, hit it again, tested today again at the lows, and then boom, rallied off there to close right on the 200-day uh, exponential moving average, which is now resistance overhead. So if we go up any higher, you can see Amazon entered the gap, not by a whole lot, stopped by the 200-day and closed right about on the bottom of the gap. But it kind of jives with the analysis on the market. If, you know, we pop tomorrow and a QQQ, goes on to fill the gap, then so will Amazon almost certainly, very likely at least. Uh, otherwise, that's it, and that's the bounce, and we continue down. But again, anything, I'll just make it clear. What I see on this chart, that doesn't look like the, the move is over. To me, it's just a matter of how much do we bounce. We've already bounced, so that's that part's over, if, whether we bounce or not. And now, from here, it's just really how much more do we bounce before the next leg down. And last but not least, I followed up um, uh, with um, this morning on the site with some uh, bounce targets for the futures. Same same story. There's my bounce target range posted earlier today for NQ Nasdaq 100 e mini futures. We were right at uh, the uh, 7491 uh, resistance level at the time, and I had us coming up to at least this lower level here. Uh, that box right there, which is uh, had a white line, you know, I, I must add, let's see if I added that app to the chart. It doesn't show the level right there for some reason that's missing. Uh, NQ, I uh, zoomed in a little bit here. Let me co pull back out. Let me turn that volume off, make it a little more clear for everyone to see. And nope, I didn't put that line was hand drawn in on that chart before I posted it. And it was right here. Uh, there it is, right where we hit today. So uh, again, let's look at that other chart there from this morning. 
Uh, you can see this is the white line I'm referring to, uh, first, uh, first target in the bottom of my bounce target range. You can see coming off these reactions here, right there, come over, bring across, that's that white line that was there, that was the bottom of that range. And again, that's the one I just added to the chart for you now, because I had uh, the levels weren't shown there. And that's exactly where we stopped today. So the same story is uh, QQQ and SPY. Um, that's not coincidence, that's um, the bottom of my uh, bounce target range there. And hold on, was that the uppermost target? Uh, let's see on that chart. Uh, 7722. And I'll keep keep in mind, I'll also be looking at ES and uh, NQ, ES, SPY, and all that if and when they get there. But uh, so 7722, let's go back to this NQ chart. Yeah, that's it. So let me put that, that box back for you there. There's the bounce target range. So we've already hit the bottom of it. And so uh, from here, my, you know, this is where uh, the futures go. We either reverse uh, where we stop today, maybe come up here, and again, that's uh, uh, really more of a zone right now. And then finally, on that, um, we'll wrap up with this one. Here's ES. Uh, now that was NQ. There was my bounce target range for ES, running from uh, 288, uh, 2883 up to about 2935. Uh, 2883, 2935. Let's pull that chart now, a live chart, and add that there. That's it. So you can see a perfect tag of my minimum bounce target today. You know, good for day traders. Even this morning, there was plenty of meat left on that bone for a day trader to uh, go long futures and, and, you know, run up to that, at least that first target. And like I said, you can one of two ways, you know, whether you're whether it's QQQ, SPY, whatever, whether you're doing the ETFs or you can either trail stops up if you're holding out for that or you can stop and reverse there, you know, close the long and reverse. I had trail tight stops up and then set an order to reverse. So, you know, as of now, I'm short. But again, I'll on those shorts that I have, as soon as I'm done with this video, I'm going to set some stops just above there, somewhere above the top of that gap. I'll look at each each security and um, then get stopped out if that's the case. And that's active trading stuff. However, swing trades, I started that on today uh, before the close and at those levels. And we'll continue to, uh, like I said, add on whether we go up or down. And that was ES. And then finally, a few uh, NQ traders or RTY, small cap ETF traders, if that's what you trade, uh, gave you as well a bounce target range for um, the small caps right there. And that was RTY bouncing up to about the 1520-ish level, up to about 1547 or so. And uh, that one's fallen quite short. As I showed you earlier, uh, IWM lagged behind. It was all about the large caps today, uh, particularly QQQ. So that's it. Um, and again, what I'm looking at the charts here, these, these don't look like bottoms. They look like over extreme oversold. As I said, this is a 60-minute chart of the IWM futures. Um, here's the RSI down here at levels not even seen um, probably all year. Um, in, in 2019, so extremely oversold down there, and uh, you have the PPO, ex you know, very, very, very deep down into, um, you know, low territory. It's not a oversold, overbought indicator, but uh, it's quite stretched. And so, again, you don't fall forever. And of course, uh, small caps like uh, the large caps came up on support at yesterday's lows as well. All right, we will wrap it up here, and let's just let's just see where things go tomorrow and into you know tonight and into tomorrow. But uh, I like I said, I, I favor a resumption of the downtrend this week, and uh, you know if that doesn't prove to be the case, I'll I'll adjust and adapt to my analysis. But as of now, I think that that uh, reversal can come anywhere from where we close to like I showed you those uppermost bounce targets. We'll wrap it up here. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.